he's a kid of few words, does all his racing on the circuit. We've just got the one final remaining on today's program. This is part one of the Karting Nationals presented by Simon Cables. A reminder to uh, check your local guide for part two, the second show in our Karting Nationals coverage. It comes your way on May 3 on Fox Sports. There's the grid. This is Leopard Light final time. And um, a good field of 34 carters in what will undoubtedly be a highly competitive affair once again. One of the interesting competitors here is Dave Syrup, and he'll start on the outside of the front row in cart number 96, and Matt Payne caught up with him earlier today. One of the leading lights in the leopard light class is David Serra. David, travelling pretty well so far. Yeah, pretty happy with the way things are going this weekend. And for you to come to the Nationals, you've recently just returned from the European Rotex Championships. How does this event uh, compare? Well, it's a lot easier over here. Like, they don't take things as serious. But also, it's very competitive over here, and we're hoping to win it. Well, every event has been super competitive so far. The Leopard Light Final. We're only seconds away from unleashing this field of 34 drivers. Matt Wall on pole in 15. He got the best start. I think you'll find Heinuk, it is, that's in uh, second spot already in cart number 45. No place for the faint-hearted out there. All couple of them get out into the dirt, but make amends, although there's one driver further back in the pack who is going to rejoin well back in the field. I think that's Elon Sammy, actually, in 91. Yes, we have a look here. Matthew Wall out in front. Got Jason Heinuk right behind him. It's a familiar sight on the cart tracks of Australia. These two are great mates and have raced against each other a lot over the years and have raced here a lot over the years. Good shot of the speed involved in, in Leopard Light. Tell us about this class, Matt. Yeah, the Leopard class utilises a 125cc water-cooled engine that's manufactured by a army in Italy and brought into Australia by Remo Racing. It develops probably around 28 to 30 horsepower, a fairly user-friendly engine, uh, sounds fantastic and goes like a bat out of hell. Well said. Actually, I wondered what you were going to say then. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> you can see the action. Nothing between them again as a head up the hill and the speed is on in earnest this race a, a 14 lap finale and it's the final race on today's program part one of the karting nationals check your local guides for part two of the karting nationals coming away on fox sports with the remaining five classes to complete what has been a tremendous weekend of motorsport here at sydney's eastern creek raceway we have a look through the field. Number of competitors there, number 81, that's Fergus Symes. He's done a fair few laps around this circuit as well. Sitting back there, he'd be looking for a big result out of this one. This is actually the fastest class around Eastern Creek this weekend. And uh, I know that the engine importer, Remo Luciani, is very happy with the numbers that have turned out for this national title. Only around the second or third time that Leopard has been included as a national title class. Wall is the leader. 96 in second, Dave Syrup. And uh, there is another Syrup involved in this race being James in cart number 94. He also is very handily positioned. That's him in third. Marginally ahead of uh, Jason Heinuk in 45. Aidan McBride there a little further back. He's the current Australian Rotax champion driving for the PDB Gillard team. Also driving for that team over in the European Rotax Championships as Sarah swings to the front. David Sarah is racing with Hayden McBride over in that championships. Actually, Sarah being backed by the Australian-made Arrow Factory in the European Championships. So great uh, effort there from Drew Price Engineering to have a team entered in that championship. Of course, Drew Price Engineering needs no introduction in Australian karting. Really been the benchmark for so many years in, in so many aspects of the sport and have certainly invested vast amounts of uh, resources in the sport problem there for Wally went from first back to third he went a little bit wide at the carousel that's allowed Sarah to take over the lead he's got his cousin James right on his hammer now Wall's coming under pressure from Heine because they swing down into turn one again that magnificent low speed shot yes yeah, Sarah and Sarah Running one and two on the circuit. It is great camera work. Gives you an idea of the speed of these carts. 
the tight shots uh, particularly showcase the pace and you've got to give a rap to all of the teams there the, the drivers their, their parents in the case of the youngsters the presentation of the teams is absolutely top notch isn't it yeah you've got uh, the 32 there John o Taylor. he's out of Victoria he's really giving his teammate in fact Hayden McBride some hurry up there as they swing through and now we've got five laps left remaining in this leopard light final it's David Serra who leads the way he's got James Serra right behind him then it's Matthew Wall followed by Jason Hynu four of the top carters in the nation are nose to tail in this field and it's testament to the leopard class that these four drivers are racing in it and are at the front of the national championships and they certainly vindicate their inclusion in the national championship by virtue of the standard of the racing we're witnessing at the creek a huge weekend here at Eastern Creek, as we've alluded to before today. Over 400 competitors, a magnificent effort from the North Shore Kart Club. I've never seen the place look so good. There's tents pretty much everywhere as Wall looks up the inside, takes over second from the Truly Kart, takes Heinuke through with him. James Serra back to fourth place. Yeah, Heinuke, he thought if you're going here, so am I. That was gutsy stuff on the Simon cabling replay. We see Wall up on the inside, and what's behind you? Wham! Straight up on the inside as well. And obviously that left James Serra being bumped back two spots, which won't please him any. Not at all, he won't be happy with that, certainly for the family pride. As we see now Hayden McBride up involved in the action, he takes over that spot from Jason Hynuke. Look at the side of McBride's cart, hasn't he been involved in some action? Tyre marks all over it. Not far to go now, the Leopard Light finale will reach a conclusion. And they continue to negotiate this racetrack at Eastern Creek, 1.024 kilometres in length. Makes it probably one of the biggest cart venues in the country. Sarah's really stolen the march on his opposition here, well and truly out in front as he comes down onto the front straightaway. And a little bit of controversy, I'm just picking up here that David Serra's been given the meatball flag, he's been given the mechanical defect flag. So, what's the problem for Serra? Is there a problem with that cart? I can see a spring hanging off the exhaust pipe. So a problem for Serra, he's been given... So that's exactly what it looks like. It's a black flag with a bright orange dot on it. Means you've got a problem. As we saw, the spring was flapping on the back of Sarah's cart. So as we cross back here, we've got a replay of McBride. But the real interest is in Sarah now. I think he will be okay, though, because it's happened in the last couple of laps of the race. I think he will be fine. All right, well, we'll let the officials sort that out. We'll just call it as we see it. And that replay reflecting the fierce battle. There is our leader, David Sarah. Sitting very calmly in the cart, as calmly as you can do anyway when you're about to win a national championship. And a problem there for 48 out of harm's way, pushing the cart off to the side of the circuit. Peter Orr, that was, who's obviously had a problem. And there's the chequered flag. So David Serra emerges the victor in the leopard light finale here at the Simon Cabling 2007 Australian Karting Nationals. Oh, there's a nasty incident. After the chequered flag, Chris Wharton. That is huge. That is a big, big incident. Uh, camera's not really capturing the moment graphically. Look at the top of the screen. There he is. He's rolled over. That's a big crash. He's taken the impact right on his helmet. So the neck area, shoulder area will be really affected for that. And eight, the 18-year-old Chris Wharton out of Queensland. Let's hope that he's OK. Well, you very seldom see that in karting, thank goodness. Thanks for joining us for our coverage of National Kart Racing on today's program. You'll see the finals in Junior National Light, Clubman Super Heavy, Senior National Light, Leopard Heavy and Clubman Light. Matt Payne, our expert commentator beside me. Thanks Dave, beautiful weather conditions here this afternoon for these finals as we get set for Junior National Light. The defending national champion Chaz Mostert's on the pole and he's looking to make it three in a row. Jerzak will start beside him. As you can see on screen, it's a big field. There are 40 drivers to do battle in a highly competitive class. And a start is now imminent. As you see the remaining drivers that will have a monumental task as they start down towards the back of the grid. Earlier today, we caught up with Braden Pritchard for his thoughts on the event. Yeah. Braden, although you're only young, you have been racing for a little while. Yeah. How long have you been racing for? 
about five years. And how's the Nationals going? This is your first Nationals, is it? In juniors, yeah. And how are you going? Yeah, I'm going alright. What's your hope for this afternoon? Yeah. What's your hope for this afternoon? Um, I hope I, I'm, th I'm hoping that I'll get, I'll get in the top ten. Yeah, one of the youngsters involved in this event. Here we go then, the Junior National Light finale at the Karting Nationals is underway with Mostert and Jerzak on the front row. Mostert is the leader, as you can see them tear up the side of the circuit. That's the northern side of the Eastern Creek Karting Raceway. And have a look at them, 40 of them in almost identical machinery. And some of these kids are featherweights, man. Absolutely. They start off at around the 11 years of age mark, move up from the rookie division into junior national light with the J engines. 120 kilos is the minimum cart and driver weight. You saw there that Christopher Hayes out of the Gold Coast in Queensland made a good start. He's got himself into second place. we got his fellow Queenslander, Nicholas Foster, right behind him. So Mosdip out in front leading by a few metres. Apley with the number one emblazoned on the side of the cart. Here's a battle as we watch Kovacic move up on the inside. The driver at cart number two was able to pull off a nice move on Luke Rochford. That's him in 15. They run nose to tail and through the S's. And a great battle developing up front here. Yeah, Hayes really putting Mostert under pressure at the moment. These two are trying to make a break. Mostert's been at the front of the karting ranks for some years now. Started off in the midget division, moved up through the rookies, and is now in junior national line. Now, as we saw in our previous program, looks likely to skip through the uh, senior ranks and go straight to Formula Forward. So nose to tail, plenty of slipstreaming going on out there. Mostert, he drives defensively, very much under siege from Christopher Hayes. And you can also see this charge of James Kobajit in uh, cart number two. He comes up on the inside to secure what was almost second place. You can see there has been a change of the lead. Hayes straight up the inside here as we cross to the Simon Cabling replay. Up the inside of Mostert. Mostert looks to his right there, or left I should say, and uh, Kovacic. Very, very aggressive, but couldn't quite pull the move off. A bit of bump and grind between the two young fellas there. Yeah, no place for the faint-hearted, all right. <laughs> Moss has got the right hand up, saying, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, not happy. Get off me. The Forest's Beach youngster, James Kovacic, now he gets the job done, heading down into the final chicane. Then Nicholas Foster's right there as well. At the back of that group, I saw David Whitmore in cart number 57. He started right down in the field, and he's really made a strong charge through the field to be where he is at the moment. Mostert slowed down appreciably there, didn't he? For a couple of laps, I'm not sure what went astray with the, the young man's cart. And he's, yeah, he's telling them to go by. Possibly just uh, trying to get his head together, I, I guess, when you get pushed from pillar to post. It uh, will take you a little while just to get your mind back on the job. As we see there, Nicholas Foster, another one of these Queenslanders, and then cart number 76, who of course is Ben Jerzak. Ben out of Queensland, driving for Superior Cart Equipment and the Red Speed team. Running around fifth at the moment. Now Mostert slides it up the inside of Kovacic. Takes over second place, but Hayes has really stolen the march on them at the moment. Indeed, the Junior National Light finale not letting us down in the entertainment stakes. And I'm sure that will be replicated in the remaining four finals on today's program in the culmination of the Simon Cabling. Australian Karting Nationals, nose to tail, they run through the right hander. The pace is an absolute cracker here. Perfect weather conditions at Eastern Creek after plenty of rain leading up to the event. Circuit, as you can see, is dried out. There's some cloud cover at the moment. And uh, not too hot here, so comfort level for the drivers is good. See Jared Egan there leading Luke Rochford. Jared's made some progression through the field to be where he is at the moment past Rochford and is setting out after our front crew. Been an amazing race really. Mostert who started on pole, that man right hand side of screen, led for a couple of laps and then jostled back but appears to be clawing his way back into contention. Kopashik behind him in machine number two. That was a name that figured prominently on part one of our coverage a couple of days ago. Yeah, he's a good young driver, is James Kovacic in that Credix trade exchange cart. Has done a lot of racing around Australia at the moment and um, out of Forest Speech in the New South Wales Central Coast. 
doing a good job at the moment, sitting in third. Now look at David Whitmore. Here he comes, straight past Jerzak. He's up to fifth place. It's been an amazing drive from Whitmore. Started deep in the field, had a bit of bad luck in the heats, and he's making amends for it now. Good performance also by Nicholas Foster. He lies in fourth behind the wheel of cart number 13. Well, have a look at this battle. It is absolutely raging. It's a cracker, the scrap for the minor placings. The leader's cruising along with a, a gap of a few metres, although in this sport a few metres doesn't account for much. But look at that. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. You can throw a blanket over them. Here comes Foster up on the inside. Bit of jostling, oh, and more contact out there. A bit more. Here we go, Foster up the inside of Kovacic through the carousel, makes the pass stick, a pretty good move there. Whitmore tries to take advantage, then just drifts out and collides with Foster. Nothing too much in that, both of them have to, have to fight another day. Of course these drivers are not secured in the seats of these carts with any form of racing harness, no belts whatsoever. That being said, you're, you're very snugly tight in these seats, aren't you? It really wraps around the ribcage. Definitely. And check